Tell us about liking. Liking. Well, this is one I've only read about because I can't get people to like me, but I'll tell you what it means. Simply put, we are more likely to be influenced by people we like. So Cialdini identifies several factors that lead to liking, like physical attractiveness, similarity, compliments, familiarity, and association. We tend to like people who are good looking, who are similar to us in various ways, who pay us compliments, who are um, familiar to us. We also like things that are associated with things that we like. And celebrities are a great example. We feel we are familiar with them and find them attractive. So we're influenced by their product endorsements, something we just talked about in a previous podcast not too long ago. The principles manifest in a lot of ways in marketing. Companies strive to have likable brands with relatable personalities. Again, hire a spokesperson or create mascots that are familiar and attractive or funny. A lot of times advertisements are casted very well so that they represent the target audience that they're trying to speak to. So again, seems more familiar. Brands also build liking through flattery. They compliment us, making us feel good about ourselves for using their products, and they foster familiarity through frequent exposure and consistent visual branding. Again, I think liking is definitely a key lever out there who doesn't want to be liked as human beings, and it makes sense that it's a very key component to his little war chest of persuasion tools. It's obvious as a brand, do you want to be liked as a person you want to be liked a little harder, maybe to get your hands around. Okay. So what, you know, what's the specific tactic, I guess, to use certainly as a brand, you don't want to be disliked, but it's a little more of a generic one. But some of the other principles we've already called out, they're kind of connected. And I think this one's definitely connected to social proof because you want to be in the cool group. I think this is where, though, when used maybe not as strategically can lead to being in the sea of sameness, potentially, right? I think about some of the brands that have come to us for help. Sometimes they really start to look like all of their competitors. It's just like you can't tell one from the next. It's just like flying in the face of distinctive assets, but it's sort of following a trend in terms of how that brand is perceived and the tones they use and their color schemes and things like that. And you have to be careful, I guess, is what I'm saying on what are you trying to follow there and and what's the ultimate intent in trying to get that linking or the strategy behind it. And sometimes that liking is is kind of a journey. I mean, we've talked in the past about liquid death and it's like, well, that seems a little polarized and that doesn't seem like it, you're waving the liking flag when you're talking about liquid death. But then the more you realize they're talking about water, you're like, I like these folks, you know? So there's just a little bit of a journey you have to go on, but it definitely stands out in that CSAMIS. I think we probably experience this principle a lot as an agency. So when you're working with a, a brand, liking probably plays a huge role in when brands choose an agency partner. And you know, sometimes you just, you connect more with like certain marketing teams. And so I think that principle probably comes into play more than you'd think in like the agency hiring process. 